Welcome to Real Life Christian Church. My name is Kelly. Such a privilege to be able to join and worship with you this morning. Um, We're going to be singing an awesome song this morning called Praise. Um, And one of the lyrics, it says, I'll praise when I feel it and I'll praise when I don't. And I don't know what your week has been like or how you're feeling this morning. I don't know if you're like me and super tired (laughs) from a big week. Um, But I just encourage you, our God is bigger than that. He is an amazing God, full of amazing grace for you. And just give Him your all. So please stand with me, with us as we praise our amazing God. Praise in the valley. Praise on the mountain. Oh, praise when I'm sure. God, that you would put your treasure in these broken vessels, in these jars of clay, God, to show your power. We worship. 
worship you this morning, Lord, and thank you for all that you've done.
want you to join with me as we pray. As we pray, we're going to remember that the God we worship is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. With that in mind, we're going to pray with, with great joy and thanksgiving at the arrival of Selah Sul Yun, born to Isaac and Helen. New to our church this year, just a couple of days ago, all healthy. We're going to pray the beginning of a new life. We're also going to pray with sorrow at the passing of Rebecca Green just a couple of days ago. Our God is the God. He's the Alpha and the Omega. And He holds all of that, beginnings and endings, in His hand. Yeah. And then we're going to pray for some things that are on God's heart. Lord, we want to thank You for new life. We thank You for the arrival of little sailor. We're so grateful. Lord, that you would bring the Yuns to be a part of our church family. We thank you for this exciting new part of family life. Lord, we pray that you bless them as they enter into these first few days and weeks of their family extending to three. Lord, would you be with them, help mum to recover, uh, help Sailor to grow and thrive. Lord, we pray for them, bless them. Lord, bless all the parents across the life of our church, with every age and stage. Lord, we thank you for the high calling of parenthood. We recognize its challenges, but it's great joys. And we pray that at whatever stage of parenthood our parents are at, Lord, may we have the grace and the strength and the wisdom we need to be your people to those that we're discipling and encouraging and supporting. Lord, we thank you for Rebecca Green. We thank you for the friendships that we had with her. We thank you for the joy she brought to so many. We thank you for her resilience and steadfastness in that long battle with, with cancer. And Lord, we mourn this morning her passing. Lord, we, we pray for those close to her who are grieving, her children and family friends. And we pray that within that mourning and that sadness, there might be the, the, the flex of hope because we know that she's in your hands. And for those in Christ, we'll see her again. Thank you that you're close to those who mourn, Lord. Lord, as we continue to think about people finding their life in Christ. Lord, we, we, we lift up to you the newly reinstated RI program that we'll be participating in at Daisy Hill State School, Lord God. Thank you that we found favour. We pray your blessing over the school community, over the principal, over the business manager and all the staff. But we would pray too for the team that'll go in, uh, not this week, but next, um, who will have an opportunity with students who may never, ever otherwise hear about you. Lord, may seeds go deep. May they be able to, in ways that are respectful and encouraging, just give insight into the kingdom and the king, that students, as they wish to, can pursue that. Lord, bless them, we pray. Friends, while we're in this moment, why don't you just pray a blessing over Daisy Hill State School, just in your heart. However the Lord would lead you, just pray that God would move in that circumstance. Then you might like to pray for the state school that you drive past on your way to church or that's just in the area or where we do breakfast clubs like, like at Springwood, at Rochdale South and others in our area. Lord, we thank you for the chaplains that serve in those environments. Lord, often giving lots of energy and time for not much pay, but because they're called to serve and support and to be someone whom can be salt and light for those school communities. Would you bless them, Lord God? Think of Lex and Cassie uh, more locally, Lord. Be with them, strengthen them, encourage them. Lord, we think of the chaplains in our own school at Calvary, Lord. Pray for Dan and Jaden in the roles that they play there. Lord, may they have impact beyond the capacity they would have in their own strength.
And Lord, this morning we pray for your move across our city. Lord, we pray for the other churches in our city. We're just blessed here at Real Life. We, we sense the great joy of being part of something that has good life. And we know you, you long for that, for your church to be salt and light in the world. And so we pray for the churches across Logan City. And again, friends, in your heart, maybe pray for a church that is maybe nearby to where you live or that you drive past on your way here or that you have friends who worship at, friends or family. Why don't you just pray for it? Ask God to bless it. Ask that their mission might be sharpened. Ask that they might have an anointing and a favor in their community. Lord, we lift up your church right across Logan City. Lord, may you breathe new, fresh life into every congregation. Lord, may there just be a revelation of the love of God that overflows to local communities in a fresh way in this time. And Lord, over every gathering across this weekend, and particularly today, we pray, Holy Spirit, you might move. And that even those that don't know you would be able to say there's something going on in the city of Logan. Lord, would you be glorified because there is no other name higher than your name. In you, there's life. In you, there's hope. In you, there's purpose. And we're just so privileged to be these broken vessels, these jars of clay, as Kelly was saying earlier, that you fill and use. We thank you for the joy and the privilege of that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, why don't you take a seat? Welcome this morning to Real Life. My name is Adam. I'm one of the pastors here. It's great to be here. And um, if you're visiting, a special welcome to you. If you're you online, we're so glad that you're here. What we're going to do is if you would like to go and say good day to someone, we're going to give you a chance to do that. And we are running our Pathways sessions at the moment. This is week two of three. And so if you're involved in the Pathways seminars, they're happening in the studio across the other side of our foyer. You can head out now as others of you take the time to just say good day to someone nearby. If you want to, if you don't want to, don't. So why don't you go and say good day to someone and Pathways people, we can release you now. Just want to encourage you, if, uh, if you haven't checked in, uh, you can do that. And uh, hopefully that, if we could roll it, there we, there we go. Check in using the QR code. Uh, that QR code or a Connect card on a seat nearby, you can use either way to let us know you're here. And either way is an opportunity to share any prayer needs you might have or to do uh, some giving. Just a reminder, as part of our worship... <coughs> Uh, for many of us, we see that our giving is a part of our worship, so I want to continue to commend that to you. We don't talk a lot about giving here at Real Life, probably to our detriment, but just want to encourage you to continue to faithfully seek God out for what He would have you do with your finances as part of um, being a part of the, the, the life of our church and contributing to that and, and the way God takes what we offer and multiplies it far beyond what we could do if we kept it to ourselves always blows me away. And so um, I got paid this week. That was cool. Yeah, it's always a good week when pay happens. Um, but I want you to know the very first transaction that happens after that is, is our offering. Um, and it might sound strange, but I actually look forward to the opportunity. But I have this great privilege of I get to see what God does with it, uh, in, in probably in a greater measure because of the virtue of my role. And so yeah, I just want to continue to commend that to you just to prayerfully uh, seek that out. We're in a new budget year, and so we're trusting God for how he's going to provide. But also want to let you know that, thank you for your prayers, our manse is leased. <laughs> wow, I'm tired just even saying that. It's a big journey, and we're just so grateful for that, and we believe we've got some really good tenants, and so we're grateful for that, and then for all that that provides for us missionally as well. And so I uh, just commend all of that to you. Also, there's ways that you can let people know um, details or questions you've got as you get to that link tree via the QR code. Hey, um, I just wanted to... You might need to move me over. I don't think my click is working for us. Um, 
So, uh, yep, we've done checking in. <laughs> Next one. So don't forget, um, if you're new, someone in a blue shirt can help you with any questions that you've got. Uh, join us for morning tea afterwards. We'd love for you to do that. We'd love for you to stay. You don't have to meet everybody, but it's nice to meet someone because we're better together. And we think community is really, really important. The Christian faith is a communal faith, um, even for introverts. Like, it's a communal faith. And so we sharpen one another and encourage one another and spur one another on. And one of our rhythms that's really important for being formed in Christ-likeness is being anchored in community. And so I would encourage you to embrace the inconvenience of community. It's very countercultural to be anchored in community in our modern world. So just embrace that inconvenience because you'll be blessed. We're blessed for it. So I want to encourage you. So hang around. We'd love to get to know you. And if you're visiting for the first time, just head over to the coffee cart. Let them know you're you're here for the first time and the coffee's uh, on us. And, of course, stay connected all the usual ways with our social media and our website and check out our e-news. Now, in the next school holidays coming up, we've got a really exciting program coming up called Kids Life Plus. This is... um, uh, a three-day program is going to run on the 16th to the 18th. Uh, it'll be all day, or all day will be like kind of, you know, 9 to, to 3, 3.30, that kind of time slot. And registrations for that are open. It's for primary school age kids. Our emphasis is really this, while we're advertising it, our emphasis is on encouraging our kids who in our current programs, we're working on helping them to understand what it means for them to be and bring good news. So I have to ask permission to go into Daisy Hill State School if I want to do anything in there. Like, I have to do that. In fact, when I go to our own school at Calvary, I have to sign in so they know that I'm there. Our kids don't have to do that. They just get to be there. They're the best missionaries we will ever have for their peers. And so we want to encourage that. And so that this program is designed around our kids inviting their friends as they seek to help make disciples, to disciple them towards faith and in faith. And of course, we'll have others along the way, but, but we're just excited to be able to run that for three days. And so could you uh, both register if you want to, uh, if you've got friends with kids or, or you, you just want to in, encourage people to think about uh, signing up for that, you could do that. Also, if you want to be praying for that, that would be really, really great as the team comes together for that. Uh, let us know. And just one more thing I want to share before we get ready for our message this morning is Global Leadership Summit is coming up. Um, Put it in your calendar um, on Saturday, the 12th of October. This is one of the best days of the year uh, of leadership input that we're going to get. we, We value empowering leadership at Real Life, and this is one of the ways that we do that. It is a great privilege for us to be able to host a premier site. Not every church gets to do this. We get the great privilege of being asked to do it. Uh, We're trusted to do it. So if you are interested in leadership, you've got friends or colleagues that you work with who are interested in leadership, then there'll be something in this for everybody. And I want to commend that to you. We still have at the moment a discount rate, so you can go um, uh, for less than full price at $110, I think at the moment it is. Uh, And so you'll be able to find information about that hopefully on our website. We will send out another e-news with that information in it as well. Can I encourage you, last year we had about 75 delegates on the day. We already have way over 75 delegates registered for this year. And so it's very, very exciting as church leaders and community leaders come together. So I want to really commend that to you, church. This is one of the the coolest things we do all year. It's it's a part of our regular feature, so commend that to you. Hey, I'm really enjoying this series we're in called Formed. Anybody else? Here's what I know. Before I get Karen up and us to pray, come on up, Karen, we'll pray. But I just want to say this. Here's what I'm discovering as I sit in these messages. They're pushing my buttons. Anybody else? So could I encourage you, as you sit in this formed series, we have very deliberately visited a series like this, is as it pushes your buttons, my prayer is this, Lord, let it push all our buttons. Do you know what I mean? Because good preaching won't just tickle our ears. Hopefully God uses it to challenge our hearts, right? So the question we could ask as we sit under the series and the preaching is to go, God, if, this is, if I'm feeling a bit, mm, I don't like this, what are you doing in that, God? Do you know what I mean? Don't don't make your first response, what's wrong with the preaching? (laughs) Make your first response, why is this pushing my buttons, God? And then go, oh, yeah, maybe there's something I need to consider in all of this. Does that make sense? I reckon that's great preaching if you go away disturbed.
Yeah. And I'm really hoping Karen's going to really disturb us today. <laughs> so why don't we pray for Karen with all of that um, lead up. <laughs> Lord, thank you so much, uh, both for Rich Velotis and the work that he did in his book, Deeply Formed, that's, that's been inspiring this series, but Lord, also for the work that Karen's done as she sat with you and on our behalf has listened to discern what you would want to say to us as we think about what it is to be formed more and more into the likeness of Christ. Lord, would you anoint her for today? Lord, we ask for today's anointing. And we pray for us too that our hearts might be open to what you would say to us. Lord, help us to, to respond to the niggles, Lord, that your word is that double-edged sword and it cuts and, and, and examines the lower decks of our lives, so to speak. Lord, would you just let it do that for us today? And Lord, would you, would you continue to form us as your word does its work in us? So we bl- ask your blessing over Karen and, uh, and over us now as we hear the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. My prayer is not that I disturb you, but that the Holy Spirit disturbs you this morning. If you were driving on the highway and your engine warning light suddenly came on, what would you do? Would you ignore it and hope that it will go away? Maybe you've been in this situation and you thought, ah, she'll be right. It'll go away eventually. Or would you give it the attention that's required? Either get to the nearest mechanic, call RACQ, stop, look under the bonnet, call your husband, or for some of us, we might call our son-in-law. Maybe you've neglected to check the oil or the water to take it for a regular service. Because everything seemed fine. It still drove okay. It got you from A to B. But all along, what was happening underneath the bonnet was slowly deteriorating. And the cry out from your engine was, warning, warning. Said, you need to look inside. How often when we walk through the doors here every week or when we gather in various groups, do we ignore the warning lights of our lives? On the outside, we are all good. But really on the inside, there is a very different story being played out. My guess is this is very real, common story and occurs more than we care to admit or acknowledge. On the outside, things seem okay, but on the inside, warning lights are going off everywhere. But they are silenced by, it'll be right, I'm good, I'll get through, It'll all be good when. We need to pay attention to what is happening on the inside because if it will only be a matter of time before the inside begins to affect the outside and it's noticed. Similar to Adam and Claire, I too have been deeply challenged in my preparation for our message this week. So what I share is very real and very raw for me. But I want to acknowledge it may be for some, if not all of us, today. We are now week three into formed series and we're all being formed, but by what? In the first week, Adam made this statement. To be formed in Christ necessitates a reordering of our life. How are you going with reordering your life? How are you going with the contemplative rhythms of practicing the presence of God, 
silent prayer and Sabbath keeping, slow reading of scripture, being anchored in community. How have you gone this past week being open to the Holy Spirit to lead you on the path of reconciliation, being shaped by the habit of remembering and incarnational listening and lament, reconciliation, prayer, self-examination, regular confession and repentance and forgiveness? This week we are going to explore deeper a habit that Claire touched on last week. That if we are going to be fully formed in Christ, then the practice of internal examination is critical to a life transformed by the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. I'm going to ask lots of questions today because that's what examination means, having a look inside. How often is there a disconnect from your inside and what you choose to reveal or display on the outside? How often is there a disconnect from your Monday to Friday or your Saturday or your Sunday? We compartmentalize our lives, family, friends, work, church, hobbies. How often are we happy to live above the surface rather than exploring what's going on beneath? Maybe it's too painful. Maybe it's too hard. Maybe we don't know where to start. How often do we make excuses or consume ourselves with busyness to avoid looking below the surface? How often do we pretend everything's okay when really it isn't? Dr. Larry Crabb, who's a Christian psychologist and author, wrote in his book Inside Out this, this statement, only Christians have the capacity to never pretend. That's because real change is only possible when you, have, when you face the realities of your internal life and let God mold you into a person who is free to be honest, courageous, and loving. As Christians who are walking in a life-giving relationship with Jesus, we are called to daily life, a daily life as transformation, which means looking beyond the surface, exploring the things of our past, our upbringing, significant events and trauma in our lives, our anxieties, our feelings and our reactions, and asking the tough questions and then submitting them to the healing and transforming power of Jesus. Why? Well, first and foremost, so that the barriers that keep us from fully submitting our lives and being vulnerable before God are broken down. But also, so we live free, honest, authentic and loving lives. How often have we heard the saying, hurt people hurt people? As Christians and children of God, it is my prayer, it should be our prayer, that this label doesn't stick to us, hurt people hurt people. Because we are willing to be open to the transforming power of Jesus daily. Rick Philotus, who wrote the book that this series is based on, says this, interior examination is a way of life that considers the realities of our inner worlds for the sake of our own flourishing and the call to love well. The book of Psalms exemplifies a model of opening up the internal thoughts and cries of the heart before God and allowing him to conduct a full examination. 
Psalms is a picture of God saying, it's okay to be human. Giving full expression of our human emotions is okay. He doesn't stop David or, the, or sugarcoat anything that the psalmist says. And I guarantee you, you will find a psalm that gives expression to whatever you are facing and dealing with. Just have a look. Psalms are full of emotion, anxiety, fear, joy, praise, rage, hopelessness, worship, faith. The list is long. But there's one well-known psalm that expresses our all-knowing God and his interest in what is happening on the inside of our hearts and lives. And this psalm can be a good place to start to live a daily life of examination and can keep us on the path of transformation through Jesus. It is Psalm 139. I'm going to read verses 1 to 4 and then skip over to 23 and 24. It says, O Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit or when I stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm afar away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say before I say it, Lord. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. We can find comfort from this psalm that God knows everything about us. Everything. So coming before him with our inner thoughts our feelings, our anxieties, our fears, our challenges, our doubts means there's no surprises to him. And in spite of him being all-knowing, he loves us and accepts us regardless. So opening our inner lives and what's beneath the surface to him won't damage or stop his love for you and I, and it doesn't change the fact that knowing all this, our sin and our failures, he said, my love is so great for you that I will sacrifice my son for you. Now that's a truth we need to hold on to and remind ourselves of every single day. God loves us so much, his son was sacrificed on the cross for us. So if we take a lead from the psalmist, and start at the same place, we are basically saying to God, it's time, Lord, for a full examination. Check everything out. Perform open heart surgery on me. I love how the message translates verses 23 and 24. It says, investigate my life, O God, Find out everything about me. Cross-examine and test me. Get a clear picture of what I'm about. See for yourself whether I've done anything wrong. Then guide me on the road to eternal life. God is interested in the heart health of his children. Always has been. And continues to be. When God sent Samuel to find another king to replace Saul, Samuel looks at Jesse's sons and the one he thought was surely God's choice. God speaks to Samuel and says, No, he's not my choice. 1 Samuel 16 7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. The most important aspect for God, if he was going to anoint a new king, 
for his people was, does he have a heart like my heart? Does he love my people like I love my people? God wants us to pay attention to what is happening in the inner parts of our heart because he knows it impacts on how we live in relationship with him and in relationship with others, including those who have not discovered Jesus yet. Now, if you still need more justification and you're not really convinced of the importance of the practice of examination in our lives as fully formed followers of Jesus, then I've got a few more verses for you just to help you. And this is not exhaustive. There are so many more. Matthew 7, 3 to 5 says, And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite, first get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eyes. Matthew 23, 25 to 26, when Jesus is talking to the Pharisees, he calls them hypocrites and he says, for you are so often... So so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are filthy, full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first wash the inside of the cup and the dish, and then the outside will become clean too. 1 Corinthians 11, when coming together around the table, Paul says a heart check is required. And he says in verse 27 and 28, So anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. That is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. Paul also says in 2 Corinthians 13, he challenges the people to have a look at their lives and how it aligns to the truth of the teachings of Jesus and a life filled with the presence of God when he says in verse 5, examine yourself to see if your faith is genuine, test yourself. Surely you know that Jesus Christ is among you. If not, you have failed the test of genuine faith. Or the well-known psalm, Psalm 51, the infamous psalm where David pleads for mercy, forgiveness and cleansing when Nathan confronts him about committing adultery with Bathsheba. The message translates verses 5 and 6 like this. I've been out of step with you for a long time, in the wrong, since before I was born. What you're after is truth from the inside out. Enter me, then conceive a new true life. The list is exhaustive, and I encourage you throughout this week, do your own research. See what God's saying through it. But one scripture passage what does talk about the examination of the heart is Hebrews 4, verse 12, and it says, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting beneath soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Selwyn Hughes, um, pastor and author, an author of Every Day with Jesus, says this about Hebrews 4.12. Only the Holy Spirit unfolding his truth through Scripture can cut through our subterfuges and show us our real motivation. All Christians have an escapist mentality. It has been in us since the day we were born, and despite what some may advocate, it does not magically disappear at the moment of our conversion. He goes on to say, only he, the Holy Spirit, can cut through the layers of our personality and show us what is motivating us in that part of our being which is just below the level of awareness. God wants his people to have a heart like him and with the knowledge of this truth, This requires of us to open our inner lives to the examination of the Holy Spirit so we are shaped to be more like Jesus and to love like Jesus 
and to live a life of freedom and authenticity, authenticity and honesty. So for the rest of our time, I want to very briefly touch on four areas of our lives where the practice of examination can bring breakthrough, healing and wholeness. And as I was preparing for today, I thought, I really want something visual. Sometimes, you know, I'm a bit of a visual person. And so the people who are visual amongst us might appreciate this. But I hope, if nothing else, the visual that I've tried to put together for this part, if nothing else that you remember that this visual sticks in your mind from today. Our inner examination is heart examination. Proverbs 4.23, the Passion Translation says, So above all, guard the affections of your heart, for they affect all that you are. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being, for from there flows the wellspring of life. From our heart, our innermost being flows life. And we need to pay attention to, first of all, our family of origin. Claire introduced this last week, how the influences of our upbringing might inhibit us to step into reconciliation with people groups. And biases may have been formed as we grew up towards people who are different to us. But our family of origin shapes more than this area. What things have shaped or influenced you from your growing up? Has how you were parented given you a healthy or unhealthy view of parenting or how you interact in your relationships? Are there patterns from your growing up that you see repeating themselves in your life or in multiple generations throughout your family? Have there been any significant events in your life? Unexpected loss, choices that have cost significantly, patterns of behaviour such as workaholism, conflict avoidance, that have cost legacies both positive and negative conform. Maybe you grew up in a Christian home and the pattern was you attended church every single week. You experienced gathering as a community to be an important part of your life. Or you sat around the dinner table as a family on a regular basis, which created opportunity for healthy family conversations. And these have shaped you in how you now parent and model to your children and your family. Maybe the script you have heard throughout your life is, you're not good enough. You can do better. Or you'll never amount to anything much. Or it's the opposite. You can do it. Anything's possible. You are loved. Or one my husband shared to me this week, you're a pastor's son. You should know better. If you were to stop and reflect, what would come to mind? What might the Holy Spirit reveal? Maybe some things have come to mind as I was, as I was giving some examples, or just maybe what's come to mind has brought to the surface some anxious thoughts, or some familiar feelings and reactions. Which leads me to the other three areas of our inner heart examination, which, to be honest, I couldn't separate. They overlap, and they can also be connected to our family of origin, and they are our feelings and our anxieties and our reactions. Feeling anxious about situations and events is human. Feelings of anger and discontent, fear and sadness 
are normal feelings. But often when anxiousness surfaces or feelings of sadness, fear, or anger consume us as Christians, we become hard on ourselves, don't we? Thinking, I shouldn't be like this. The joy of the Lord is my strength, isn't it? If this is how we think, then we are walking down a path of constant self-condemnation. And that's not a heaviness God ever intended for us to carry. Didn't Jesus say in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30, come to him, there's rest for our heavy burdens. What about our reactions to certain events and situations? Do you have a fight or flight reaction? Or maybe your reaction is to freeze. Have you ever stopped to ask yourself the question, why? Maybe your reactions go back to the patterns and the scripts and the significant situations you encountered growing up. What about the reaction of anger? How many of us have been in the situation of wondering, where did that anger outburst come from? I didn't or did see it coming. To stop and ask the question is key to a fully formed life in Christ. If we are committed to the journey, and it's a journey, it's not a destination, it's a journey of being transformed to be more like Jesus and reflecting Christ more and more to a broken world, then we need to grow in naming recognizing and managing our inner heart health. We need to grow in discerning the deeper message that is behind our emotions and reactions, asking the question, what is this about? Why am I feeling this way? What's triggering the anxious thoughts? When we ask these questions, we need to also ask God for the courage to do this, to be like the psalmist and say, investigate me, Lord, investigate my life, cross-examine me and test me. Get a clear picture of what I'm about. See for yourself whether I'm doing anything wrong, then guide me on the road to eternal life. The full expression of human emotions through the psalmist in the book of Psalms is a good place for us to start and spend time working through what the Holy Spirit is saying. But we can also look to the life of Jesus and to Jesus himself. He came to earth, didn't he? He was fully God, but also fully human which means as he walked this earth, he gave expression to human feelings and reactions. The shortest verse in the Bible, John eleven thirty three, 33, says Jesus wept. That's it. That's the verse. He wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. He expressed anger in the temple, despair in the garden. He felt pain and abandonment on the cross We even read in Matthew 27, verse 46, Jesus speaking Psalm 22, 1, when he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken or abandoned me? Jesus felt it all. He was not immune to human feelings and emotions, but, and there's a big but, Jesus also showed us the way to work through what was going on inside. He said, come to him, all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He spoke his authority over the storm that was confronting the disciples who were filled with fear. He took time aside to pray and spend time with his father when he was weary. And when his disciples had denied him, he replaced disappointment with love and forgiveness. He showed us the way. He showed us the truth. And he showed us the life. 
He is the way, the truth, and the life. So regardless of what pattern, significant events and scripts that have been part of our lives to date, no matter what anxiety or feelings and reactions that are constantly stirred in our inner being, when we open up our inner self up to the examination of the Holy Spirit, it gives the opportunity for the truth to break in, for Jesus to break in. With his truth, you are loved, you are precious, you are forgiven, you have a purpose, you don't need to strive for acceptance. I'm going to replace your script with a new script. You don't need to hide because I see you. And I already love you. Remembering and holding on to the promises contained in God's word and looking at the life of Jesus is so important. He understands us and holds us. So amongst the chaos, the turmoil, the influences of our past, present and whatever might lay before us now, Regardless of the mess that we think our lives might be in and what's going on inside of us, we can take comfort from what Paul actually says in Colossians 1 verse 17 when he says, He existed before anything else and he holds all creation together. All creation together. Everything is held together by him, protected and prevented from falling into chaos. He sustains all life. That means he holds you and I in his hands. And if you think you are beyond the reach of his love and care, then I would suggest that there's a louder voice you are listening to in your life than the voice of Jesus. And maybe it's time to cry out like the psalmist, examine my heart, Lord, investigate my inner being, that I may be set on the path that leads to eternal life. I wanted to leave us with a very practical tool to take away today of how we can all start the habit of daily examination. It's the prayer of examine. This prayer was developed by Ignatius of Loyola in the 16th century as a discipline for discerning God's will and becoming more attentive to God's presence in our life. And I was introduced to this spiritual discipline about 12 months ago. And this is how it was explained to me. Think of the prayer of examine as a way of sitting with Jesus and talking through the details of your day. Slow down. Notice your thoughts, actions, emotions, motivations. By doing this, we might have opportunity to see details we might otherwise overlook. See, at the end of the day, or it could be at the middle of the day, you go back over your day, or half a day, and work through a series of questions which are up there on the screen. You might even like to light a candle as a reminder of Christ's presence in amongst all the mess and the chaos. And you may even like to write down what comes as you work through the prayer of examine. And this is what it involves, and I'll read it out. Quiet yourself in the presence of God. Give God thanks for some of the gifts of today. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide and direct your thoughts as you prayerfully review your day. When were you aware of God's presence today? When did God seem hidden? In what ways did you respond to God's call or resist God? How were you brought to life? When were you discouraged? 
speak honestly with God about whatever you notice. Celebrate the gifts. Confess your sins. Offer your grief. Receive God's grace and comfort. And then in light of all of what God's shown you, what you've noticed about your life with God today, how might you live tomorrow differently? In light of everything that you've heard this morning, in light of the promptings of the Holy Spirit, in light of all that's been revealed to you, how might you live tomorrow differently? Inner examination is heart examination of our family origin, our anxiety, our feelings and reactions. And I couldn't sum it up any better than how Rich Philotus sums it up in his book, which I'm going to read to you before we pray. The goals of self-examination are threefold. First, through these practices, we open ourselves up to the grace and presence of God. The truth is we are all in the same boat of needing a regular rhythm to help us to grow in awareness of our blind spots, our shadow sides and hidden sins. Second, we live in the world with greater freedom untangling ourselves from the from the web of inner dysfunction and confusion. The practice of looking within is not to be an act of masochism, but a choice to honour our own feelings without shame or judgement. Third, we become a presence in this world more capable of working toward peace with our neighbours and love for those who might be considered enemies. In the Sermon of the Mount, Jesus instructed us to take the way of self-examination, removing the logs from our own eyes that we may see the specks of dust in our neighbor's eyes. The world is in desperate need of people willing to examine their own selves before examining others. The work of other examination comes all too naturally. We are accustomed to viewing judging and comparing others rather than ourselves. That's easy. The way of self-examination is hard. But by God's grace, the Spirit can help us. Let's pray. Lord God, all of us see the outside of each other. But from what we've heard today, the only one that really knows our inside and our inner thoughts and the things of our hearts is you. And you want us to lay our hearts open and bare before you so that you can do a fresh work in our hearts, so that you can bring breakthrough, so that you can bring healing and wholeness, so that you can wipe away the tears of our hearts and our lives. So you can fill our lives with joy and a sense of knowing that we have a purpose in you. And so, Lord God, for every single person that is here today and those here listening online, we submit our hearts and our lives, as the psalmist did, to your examination. For you to look and take whatever is going on, Lord. Today we want to begin a journey a journey that leads us to be more and more like you and to love more and more like you. So Lord, I pray for every single one of us 
that we will constantly ask the question, Lord, look at my heart and what's going on. And that as we do that, Lord, we'll be committed to changing tomorrow for the better. So, Lord, speak into our hearts and our lives, Lord. May we submit everything to the foot of Jesus so that your power, the power of the name of Jesus, can be spoken into everything in our lives. The power of Jesus can be spoken into our families. The power of Jesus can be spoken into our anxiety. The power of Jesus can be spoken into our our feelings of hurt and disappointment. The power of Jesus can be spoken into our futures, Lord. The power of Jesus can be spoken into our today that will make tomorrow a deeper and closer walk with you. So, Lord, I pray that as we declare it in our hearts and we declare it from our mouths to speak you into our lives, I pray, Lord God, there will be a shift of the Holy Spirit and that we will be forever changed to be more and more like you. So, Lord, we give it all to you and we trust it into your hands and at the foot of your cross. In your powerful and mighty name we pray. Please stand as we sing together. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is Shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over fear and all anxiety. To every soul held captive by depression. I speak Jesus, your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life, break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire.
Before we can just continue with the song, I want to make enough space for us to be able to actually hone in on that. Well, there might be lots of stuff. If you're like me, there's lots of stuff that I think, okay, as I examine my inner life, God wants to put his finger on some things. But there's probably one thing this morning, one thing that you need to speak the name of Jesus over. So why don't we take a moment to do that? Just allow the Holy Spirit to centre your thoughts, just cooperate with the Spirit. The anxiety maybe that's been lifted up. Maybe it's an issue from your family of origin. Maybe it's an attitude you carry. Something that as you've just pondered it and as we've been singing, I speak the name of Jesus, it's risen up. Just take a moment to just allow the Holy Spirit to bring clarity around it for you. And then in your heart, just agree to cooperate with the work of the Spirit, informing it to be more like Christ, His attitude, His behavior. And there might be that there's healing needed in that. So, Lord, we just speak healing over that in Jesus' name. So as we continue to sing, I speak the name of Jesus. Just hold that thing in front of you as part of your worship. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness.
prayers that have been lifted to you this morning, God, we know that you are big enough to have victory over it all. And we just declare that as we go into our week, that we would be transformed by you. Each and every day, we would make it our mission to give our hearts over to you, to surrender to you, Lord, so that we can love your people, to love this world well. We thank you, God, for what you are doing in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining with us this morning. Please join us for morning tea out in the courtyard. The coffee cart will be up and running. If you would like prayer, please come to the front. There'll be people available to pray with you. Have an amazing week. God bless.